Welcome back to Book Break. At this time of year, if you're looking for what to read next, I thought it'd be a good time to look back on some of the best reviewed books of the year. We have been digging through press reviews, quotes from book bloggers and other influencers to find some of the books, just a selection of the books that have been so particularly raved about in 2021. Starting with one you'll definitely know about, Luster by Raven Leilani. This one has been so popular, it has been announced that it's being developed for HBO, it'll be starring Tessa Thompson, the book was also long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction, Candice Carty Williams called it the most delicious novel I have ever read, and Zadie Smith called it brutal and brilliant. And to top it off, when the book first came out and Raven Eilani was interviewed in Vogue, the article ran under the headline, If There Was Still a Commute, Raven Eilani's book is what everyone would be reading on it. Sleeping Beauties by Suzanne O'Sullivan is one that you might not have seen as much on booktube, but this non-fiction book has had some incredible reviews. The Guardian described it as an eloquent and convincing book that could actually be the start of making people in authority listen, make change, and help. Amazing words. And The Times put it in their list of the top 100 books for everyone to read in summer 2021. The book is a deep dive into the mysterious phenomenon of mass hysteria and psychosomatic illnesses. Going back to fiction, The Fell, which is Sarah Moss's latest novel, is set during lockdown and so many readers have found it exactly what they needed to make sense of what we've all been going through. As well as reviews across the major newspapers and radio stations, it's also had some really incredible feedback from early readers. A lot of the reviews that I've read acknowledge that reading about the pandemic is something that a lot of readers were wary to do, but that this book is something special. I particularly loved this quote from one reader. The reflections on lockdown and life and humans' ability to cope through periods of isolation are given a new dimension because of the way these passages are written. Moss almost breathes life into the airless room of 2020. She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan is another one that's had really great reader reviews, especially among the book blogger and bookstagrammer communities. Unsurprising, as the book is essentially Mulan meets the Song of Achilles. One influencer I saw described it as the queer reimagining of the foundation of the Ming dynasty that I never knew I needed. I've seen posts on social media from readers saying their hearts swelled when they started reading it, describing it as immersive and captivating, and praising the way that the book made them change their minds about some of the morally grey characters. And one Instagram caption I particularly liked said that this is one of those rare books that promises to do so much and delivers on every point. For Daughters of Night by Laura Shepard Robinson, which is a historical fiction crime novel, there are so many fantastic quotes that I'm just going to directly read you some of the best as they're so good. So from Antonia Senior in The Times, I would gamble what's left of my virtue on Daughters of Night being the best historical crime novel I will read this year loved that quote. James O'Brien said, Once in a blue moon levels are fantastic, one of the most enjoyable and enduring stories I have ever read. And in the Financial Times there was a suggestion that Laura Shepard Robinson would be advised to clear her shelves for future awards. And then another that you may not have come across here on booktube, A Shock by Keith Ridgway, is a literary novel that has had some rave reviews. Again, let me read you some. June Caldwell described it as political, pertinent, spunky and funny, a grand sweep of modern storytelling. A review in The Observer described it as endlessly interesting and perhaps my favourite in The Times, like Finnegan's Wake, only readable. And I also want to tell you about some really well-reviewed children's books that you might want to pick up this year, starting with The Swallow's Flight by Hilary Mackay. This is the companion novel to The Skylark's War, which won the Costa Children's Book Award. Nicolette Jones from the Sunday Times says that separately and together, these books are the pinnacle of children's literature. And then Hilary Mackay herself is a huge fan of Noah's Gold by Frank Cottrell Boyce and illustrated by Steve Lenton. She calls it proper, sparkly, witty, enticing storytelling, it's perfect. And she's not the only one, a review in the FT called that book life-affirming and blighton-esque, and the Sunday Times said it's a joyous book about the things that are truly valuable. I'm going to give you another recommendation from Hilary Mackay, seeing as she is the pinnacle of children's literature, and that is Cat Wolf on Thin Ice by Lauren St John, which Hilary Mackay called first-class fun. 
I'm just going to tell you about a few more. My Dad is a Grizzly Bear by Swapna Haddo and Dapo Adiola is, according to the Times, the book to rush out and buy for Father's Day, so keep that in mind for next summer. It was also reviewed in The Guardian as a feast of sly visual jokes and loving fun. And then finally, Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City by Rob Bidolf. Got loads of author reviews here. David Williams called this one a thrilling journey into a magical world. And Nadia Shireen called it simply awesome in capital letters, saying she loved it from start to finish. Author Laura Ellen Anderson also went for all caps in her review when she called it epic. And there are so many quotes from authors that I can't possibly read them out all here. But it's safe to say that this book is very well loved. So I'd love to know which book would you give your most glowing review to this year. Do let us know in the comments below. I will also link here to our Christmas gift guides. You can go and have a look for more recommendations of the books that we think should be wrapped up under the tree this year. And I'll see you next time.